Well, Air Gunners, welcome back to the Air Gun Advisor. Today we are going to take a look at how to help introduce air guns and the air gun world to the youth. And that, whether that may be your own son or daughter, or maybe a grandchild that you want to introduce to the sport, either way, it's important to kind of have a plan in place before you do so. Uh, and so with that in mind, and also with my experience as an educator and teacher, that I've come up with kind of five simple things that we can do as air gunners to really be a good ambassador for the sport as we introduce youth to air guns. The number one thing that you're really going to want to focus on is safety. So kids absorb so much information, whether you want them to or don't. And that includes both what you're saying and what you're doing. So it's not only important to just tell them what those rules are, but also to live by those rules. Because it's important that these guys are safe on the range. If they have an unsafe experience that goes south, they're not going to want to partake in our sport. So as an ambassador, we really need to preach and practice those safety rules so we have good shooters coming up to fill our shoes. Number two is make sure you're using appropriate equipment. Many of you know that I have a son who is nine years of age and I've been trying to get him to kind of slowly work in, into the air gun scene and have him have positive experiences without forcing him to do so. The problem I've run into almost every time, whether I was shooting a, a, a BB gun or a pellet gun or a pellet pistol, is size. The equipment size is important. It really needs to be downsized to fit the child. And in front of me right here, you see that I have the BSA Ultra JSR. This by far is the first air gun that I have come across that really truly fits someone within that 9, 10, 11, 12 year old range as we're introducing them that not only fits them, it is accurate and it is a joy or a pleasure for the shooter to use. So uh, I have this up here just as an example of one rifle that you can use, uh, one that I recommend, but uh, there are others out there as well, I'm sure. The other thing to keep in mind is that um, if this stuff doesn't fit the kid, they're not going to have any fun doing it because it's going to be frustrating. They're not going to be able to see through the scope. The eye alignment is going to be off. They're going to be reaching awkwardly around the, around the stock to find the trigger or to pull the cocking hammer and so forth. So this piece, number two, making sure the equipment fits is very important. Number three, and this is something I've seen before too and experienced myself, make sure you have something fun for them to shoot. I made the mistake of just putting out a piece of paper the first time. Bad mistake because he lost interest in that within the first minute or two minutes of, of us uh, you know, breaking out the BB gun or the pellet gun. But once I brought some reactive targets to the scene, now the interest level has increased and he wants to stay seated at that bench and have fun because what he is shooting at is fun to shoot at. And I have some examples up here, you know, a spinning target, for example, bells. Oh my gosh, those are so pleasing to the kids when they ring that bell out at 25 yards. Also a couple other things, some silhouette targets are great. They love to knock them over. Um, chalk, sidewalk chalk. Don't try to get the chalkboard chalk. It's a little too small for these guys. Sidewalk chalk is a more appropriate size and provides a nice poof or explosion whenever it is hit. And usually you get multiple shots on it. It usually doesn't break off the entire piece or destroy the entire piece. So this one piece of chalk, I might get 10 hits or 15 hits out depending upon where he hits the target. Also, again, another example of some spinner targets. And of course, these old mega boom bottles always put a smile on a kid's face as well as my face too. So just don't start out with paper. Lots of reactive, noisy, fun targets for kids. Also make sure the distance is appropriate. You know, anything from 25 yards in is really where you're gonna to wanna to start. That way you don't have the effects of wind or other effects, you know, holdover and so forth that they're gonna to have to deal with. Number three, or excuse me, number four, keep it interesting. Just like if you take a kid out fishing, if they're not catching fish, it's not gonna be fun, all right? So make sure that when you take this child out, this kid out to the range or wherever you're gonna be shooting, 
that they're not sitting around waiting for you to get equipment out, getting the benches set up, pulling out the targets. You know, you have a limited time frame to do so to, uh, to get the kid involved in the shooting activity before they're going to be ready to move on. And usually you're talking about 15 to 20 minutes worth of time. If you look into a classroom, usually a teacher is going to spend 15 to 20 minutes on a topic, then they're going to transition into something else. There's a reason for that. And as shooters, as adults, we also need to have that expectation as well. So the more you have set up beforehand, the better off the situation is going to be. And that even includes making sure the scope is zeroed, making sure you know what pellets work right for it, that the gun is all aired up, targets are placed at appropriate ranges in a variety of different locations. Uh, make sure that you are ready to roll. And finally, number five, and this is another mistake that I made, so this is from my own personal experience. Don't expect to go to the range the first four or five times and shoot beside the child all right so we all want to go we all want to shoot but why do i say that don't expect to shoot next to the child during the first four or five visits well the kid's learning they need that adult to help guide them through the process and that could be anywhere from how to load the pellets where they should aim if they're missing what to look for or even just pointing out some fun targets for them to shoot hey have you tried that one over there yet and just to kind of keep the um, keep the momentum of, of the shooting experience. And if they're not being successful at 25 yards, find some targets that are a little bit closer. Say, hey, have you tried that one over there? It's a little bit closer, let's try that. And make sure they're having a successful experience. If you're worried about what you're shooting and doing, then your attention is going to be there and not with your child or grandson or granddaughter, whoever that may be. So guys, it's your job as the ambassador to make sure that they are having fun an enjoyable, safe experience at the range. Guys, in case you can't tell, I'm gonna be starting a little bit of a series. I'm gonna be hitting up the BSA Ultra JSR, doing a review for you so you can see the total product and package and how it was working for me and my son, as well as I'm gonna be hitting this gun up that I have over my right hand shoulder here, the BSA Ultra, which is kind of like the, you have the child, adult, father son combination to work with here which i think is awesome that bsa is doing and one that kind of gets overlooked by the industry a little bit i think and i really want to shine some light on that so hey without further ado guys until next time make sure your pellets fly straight and your trigger pull stay smooth and we're going to see you right here on the airgun advisor <laughs>